Hello everyone. My name is Pei Yin Zhu from Huawei, Canada. I'm currently leading 6G research. I would like to thank 6G WFF meeting organizers to give me this opportunity to talk about 6G. In this talk, I will first introduce an overall vision of 6G, then discuss key features and research challenges. With the rapid emerging 5G commercialization, not only people will be better connected with enhanced capabilities such as a fast speed and a low, lower latency, more and more things are being connected. We are moving from a connected society toward connected everything. This will eventually enable every business to achieve digitization for the next wave of economic growth. This trend will continue beyond 2030, where 6G is expected to emerge. In our perspective, 6G will go far beyond communications. 6G will serve as a distributed neural network that provides communication links to fuse the physical cyber and biological worlds, leading to an era in which everything will be sensed, connected, and intelligent. In other words, 6G will transform from connected people, connected things, to connected intelligence. We envision that 6G will have a, a rich set of devices with various integrated sensing capabilities. For example, a human with wearable devices and embedded chips measuring biosignals, a car detecting obstacles, integrated satellites equipped with remote sensing capability. The sensed data are uploaded to base stations, which also have AI and sensing capabilities, called a neural edge in the picture. The combined sensing data from uh, devices and uh, neural edges are sent to a neural center where learning and magic uh, in inferencing will be done. The inferencing results are then sent via wireless downlink to devices to enable devices to perform whatever magic actions accordingly. Of course, some of learning and inferencing can be done locally at devices and by neural edges. In this case, distributed inferencing or federated learning can be used to reduce the amount of data transmitted, reduce latency, and preserve data privacy. Device will send learning results instead of raw sensed data. Combining sensing data from devices and neural edges, it is possible to build a replica of a physical, biological world in cyberspace. The actions can be simulated in the cyberspace before applying them on physical entities to improve the efficiency and safety. With such a system, one can imagine many new applications and there are plenty of opportunities for innovation. We see six key features for 6G as shown in this diagram. First, native AI. Second, network sensing. Third, extreme connectivity. Fourth, integrated non-terrestrial network. Fifth, native trustworthiness. Six, sustainabilities. I will provide more details on these six features in the remaining of the talk. AI machine learning can be used as a tool to improve communication performance and to automate network management. This is what we call AI for net. With 6G, network nodes, including terminals, will have built-in AI cap computing capabilities. This can be leveraged to provide distributed learning and inferencing. And this is what we called 
Net for AI. Native AI will support both AI for Net and Net for AI functions. Machine learning has been and will be used for 5G to enhance the operation efficiency of the network and optimize the performance of the physical layer modules. For example, 5G has a few hundreds operation parameters to config. Machine learning can be used to automate the parameter configuration. The radio resource management is another area where machine learning can be used to optimize the system performance. On the physical layer, machine learning can be used for MIMO decoder, channel estimation. Going forward, we need to move beyond module level optimization and utilize AI machine learning to design intelligent end-to-end -end communication link. In today's network, machine learning is typically done in the cloud. Communication network is a vehicle to carry the data, inferencing results, and a model. 6G network element will natively integrate communication, computing, and sensing capabilities, enabling the distributed learning and inferencing, facilitating the evolution from centralized intelligence in the cloud to ubiquitous intelligence on deep edges. A distributed machine learning architecture built on deep edge intelligence will be the key to meet the large-scale intelligence requirements of future society and manufacturing. In today's communication system design, we typically separate the source coding from channel coding. We understand the limit of both with entropy and mutual information, which leads to some optimized system design close to channel limit. But for the purpose of communicating and understanding, this type of uh, bit level information communication is not always needed. Human can understand each other with far less information. Dr. Weaver defined three levels of communications, technical, semantic, and effectiveness. Our communication design is still at level one. If we study AI together with communication, maybe it is possible to actually achieve a semantic level of communication. One example is a machine learning based joint source and channel coding to achieve much higher data compression rate. Information bottlenecks theory may be used to guide semantic communication design. Given the increasing concerns on the data privacy, the exponentially increasing amount of data volume, and low latency requirements of many AI applications, and the current centralized cloud AI training model will not be able to sustain distribute the learning and inferencing of reasonable assumptions instead of centralized learning. In the future, both edge nodes and devices will have building AI computing hardware and sensing capabilities. Given the high computing demands, a federated learning and inferencing could leverage all available computing resources. Therefore, the integrated communication and computing will be the key to enable this. 6G architecture should allow joint private and public operation. Ideally, private infrastructure can deal with operations of more private and sensitive parts. With such architecture, benefits are obvious, such as privacy protection, low latency, um, platform and AI as services. On the other hand, there are many challenges such as uh, increased communication burden for exchanging machine learning models, how to achieve a similar performance as a centralized training with distributed learning, how to coordinate communication and computing resources, 
how to ensure integrity for distributed learning and a power consumption as well. Sensing is not entirely new. There are many existing sensing technologies. In our context, we are interested in IF sensing, i.e. utilizing the communication radio signal for sensing purpose. There are two types of uh, sensing, device-free and device-based sensing. Device-free sensing refers to the case where the target is not connected to network while device-based sensing refers to the case where the target is connected to the network. The former is uh, similar to the radar, while the latter is uh, similar to the cellular positioning. Radar can be monostatic, where transmitter and the receiver are co-located, or biostatic, where transmitter and the receiver are not co-located. Similarly, Device-free sensing can be co-located or distributed. ISAC will support both device-based and device-free sensing, co-located or distributed. The use of a high-frequency band from millimeter wave up to terahertz, wide bandwidth and a denser distribution of massive antenna arrays in future systems will enable the integration of wireless signal sensing and communication in a system to mutually enhance each other. On one hand, the communication system as a whole can serve as a sensor. It can explore the radio wave transmission, reflection scattering to sense and better understand the physical world, providing a broad range of uh, new services. On the other hand, sensing could help improving the communication performance, such as more accurate beam forming, faster beam uh, failure recovery, and less overhead to track the channel state information. The integration of sensing and communication functions can happen at different levels from loosely coupled to fully integrated, from shared spectrum, shared hardware, to shared signal processing and protocol stacks, and even cross-module, cross-layer information sharing, benefiting one another. We are interested in more tight integration. With a networked sensor, one can envision many use cases Instead of a long list, we um, group them into four categories. First, high accuracy localization and tracking. 6G will further improve the localization accuracy from a meter level to centimeter level. With such capability, then a, a robot can perform device level, even module level installation and placement in tight spaces. In addition to the absolute positioning, high accuracy relative positioning could enable mu multiple fast-moving targets coordination, such as autonomous uh, uh, docking of a drone to a moving car, coordinated flying, combining AI and localization. Semantic localization could be used for machine communications. The second usage category is city mapping and environmental reconstruction. With a multi-level vertical cellular network and a ubiquitous coverage of a cellular system, both passive and active sensing can be used to create a detailed live city map, including buildings, bridges, and cars. This type of map could be used for many smart city services such as virtual city planning with impact studies, on-demand maintenance, traffic control, etc., and autonomous driven cars, of course. The third category is augmented human sensing. Augmented human sensing aims to provide a safe, high precision as well as low power sensing and imaging capability that exceeds human abilities. For example, equipped with a mobile device with such sensing capability, a human can see beyond the eye with ultra high resolution, see things in the dark, behind the wall, 
under skin. In other words, making invisible visible. A spectrogram analysis for air quality detection, explosive and gas detection, flaw detection in manufacturing, and uh, carefully scanning for the food we are eating. Gesture and activity recognition. High frequency band in 6G will enable higher resolution and accuracy in order to capture finer activities and gestures. It enables contactless control with macro recognition or micro recognition. Many applications can be used with such capabilities in a smart hospital or a smart home. Examples in a hospital are for detection and gesture and movement recognition, which are useful for patient rehabilitation. Intrusion detection, useful for controlling unwanted access. Sneezing and coughing detection, very useful for virus detection in today's environment. Examples for a smart home are light on and off, TV control with hand waving, virtual piano playing, combining some identity recognition using AI to allow individual recognize the control to avoid interference. To realize this capability, many problems need to be resolved first. As an example, we need to understand the basic signal design such as waveform design, sequence design, since traditionally Signals for communications and sensing have different design objective functions. The link budget aspects, because device free sensing and communication link have different coverage range and may require full duplex operation. We need to look in the procedure and uh, um, protocol design for coordinated and collaborative sensing. Sensing info can be used to assist communication in order to improve the communication performance. There are many studies in this area. Some examples are shown here. Sensing assisted channel acquisition, Sensing assisted beam forming, beam alignment, interference avoidance, etc. Also, typically, these studies assume certain sensing info are given. Then we can uh, we may see the benefit of uh, um, communication performance. For ISAC, sensing will utilize the communication resources. So the challenge is to have performance gain considering the sensing overhead. In addition to the examples mentioned before, there are many other challenges and research opportunities. For example, we need to understand new sensing key performance indicators, new channel models, and system level evaluation methodologies. Theoretical framework allowing us to jointly optimize sensing and communication, hardware co-design, telehealth communication and sensing, data fusion of multiple sensing results, privacy and security aspects, of course power consumption as well. Some of these uh, details are explained in one of the IEEE Isaac webinar listed below, which is available now on the YouTube. Since telehealth communication and sensing are quite new, hence a risk factor. So we decided to build a, a prototype to check the feasibility of this um, technology. We have several um, prototypes which can work in EBAM, 140 gigahertz, 220 gigahertz. The left picture shows the uh, prototype testing in both indoor and outdoor line of sight environment. The results are, are quite uh, promising. 
in indoor case, we can achieve around 100 gigabits per second at 80 meter wire. In outdoor case, we can achieve 210 gigabits per second around 300 meter and 75 gigabits per second at 900 meters. The right picture show a portable imaging system where we can achieve a 1 to 3 millimeter imaging resolution. Of course, uh, this type, are, this plot type, are operating in a rather favorable conditions. There are many remaining technical issues we need to address. For example, beam alignment and non-live site environment. For imaging, the the challenge is uh, is that uh, the antenna aperture usually is small for the handheld device. We created a virtual aperture in order to increase the um, uh, imaging resolution. In addition, it is desirable to have a fast scanning for portable device. People usually cannot tolerate to hold a scanner for a long, long, longer period of time. Also, due to the limited computing resources, it is preferred to use a spice scanning. The left picture shows the um, scanning pattern used in our prototype, and the right picture shows that uh, imaging results with different uh, spicities. This trial uh, demonstrated the feasibility of a fast imaging use of mobile device um, with the uh, telehertz frequency. 6G will provide a universal high-performance wireless connections and ultimate experience with speeds comparable to optical fibers. This will not only enable human-centric immersive services in the future, but also accelerate full-scale digital transmission and the productivity upgrade of vertical industry. With 5G, ARVR is one of very popular applications we expect consumers will demand even more immersive multimedia experience, including ultimate immersive cloud ARVR, glass-free 3D holographic displays, and haptic or multi-sensory communications. For vertical industry, we expect 6G will enable applications like, like collaborative robots in future factories, haptic uh, remote teleoperations in future hospitals. We improve communication system in the order of magnitude with each generation. We expect that the 6G will continue such trend. 6G will provide uh, extreme connectivities with uh, telebots per second peak date rate, 10 to uh, 100 gigabits per second experienced user rate, sub-millisecond level latency, and a 10, uh, 10 times increase uh, in, in terms of uh, connection density, centimeter level localization, and a millimeter level imaging. End-to-end -end system reliability based on controllable error distribution and a very high energy efficiency. Six G will lift factory of the future to a new level, as discussed in one of our white paper. It will enable flexible orchestra of uh, production units. Mobile robot autonomously find the most efficient place in the production line. Close human machine collaboration, production as a service, and uh, carbon free production. Uh, holistic digital twin. 5G Alliance for Connected Industry Association also has published a position paper on the evolution of 5G toward 6G. 6G will integrate terrestrial and non-terrestrial non networks. A large number of low or very low Earth orbit 
satellites will be deployed to form a mega satellite constellation in the non terrestrial network. This airborne wireless network will expand the coverage of the terrestrial cellular infrastructure and empower the new low latency solutions for ultra long haul transmission. To provide continuous high quality services to users anywhere on Earth, both networks are expected to be de deeply integrated as one system where the terrestrial and the non-terrestrial network nodes can be treated as base station in a similar way, enabling users to leverage the advantage of each type in different service conditions. Video Constellation can provide a low latency service to customers anywhere on Earth. As an example in this diagram, with SpaceX Constellation, video latency can be lower even than fiber link with proper routing algorithm design. Here we show an example of the application for VLO satellite band pipe transparent forward. Within 500 kilo radius, we can compute UIL services at Edge Computing Center and use band pipe to control the autonomous driving. Of course, the NTN can complement terrestrial network in certain remote areas, hence realize the full Earth coverage vision of 6G. With integrated non-terrestrial network, the connection to the NTN or, or terrestrial network can be transparent to a user. Long-haul low-latency application is very crucial for certain applications. If you are interested to find out uh, um, this type of uh, applications, I suggest to you watching the uh, Hummingbird Project movie. This movie was released in 2018. It showcased one extreme example of a low, lat low latency long haul application. I will not uh, tell you the details uh, so, so that I will not spoil the, uh, the, the movie. Trustworthiness is characterized by five major aspects, security, privacy, resilience, safety, and reliability. The first three are established by cryptography and defense technologies, hence are primary aspects from technology point of view. A native trustworthiness architecture is the one which meets the characteristics of a security, privacy, and a resilience based on an inclusive trust model. The existing trust model is a centralized trust model where user trust is endorsed by the corresponding subscriber um, mobile operator who purchases and deploys network equipment that has already passed the tests and the verification. This model has challenges to establish an open ecosystem. A new multilateral model could be used to allow multiple possibility of trust. Bridge model. In this mode, establish a trusted bridge between entity A and B through uh, the authorization framework with a central authority, such as a security police center on, or security management of user profile trust will be obtained from the current telecom trust model. The consensus in this model transactions are attestable and the responsibility are shared by multiple parties. High efficiency and scalability will be provided as a main feature of this model, matching the agile and tailored access requirement of 6 Endorsement, this refers to the mode in which uh, authoritative third-party measures and evaluates network trustworthiness. For example, as shown in the picture, party B could invite a third party to confirm if party A is trustworthy, and the third party could endorse party A. To realize native trustworthiness, some new technologies, as shown in this table, could be considered. Quantum-resisted security, such as lattice-based cryptography, 
and one time pad key physical security or digital ledger technologies which can handle low latency high through with low power consumption multi-user quantum entanglement key distribution and a quantum relay and a switching Sustainability is a central topic for 6G, particularly in terms of energy consumption across the entire network and associated ICT infrastructure and devices. The total power consumption shouldn't exceed the previous generations. 6G will be designed with the ultimate goal of a social, environmental, and economic sustainability. There is a need to establish an industrial consensus on the methodology for the evaluation of sustainability. With deep learning, computing demand doubles every three months. In fact, it is difficult to keep up this demand with computing hardware. We need to solve this complexity maybe by learning architecture and uh, algorithms instead of solely relying on semiconductors advancement. The other issue is related to the low efficiency for millimeter wave IF amplifier, where power um, amplifier efficiency is at a single digital level. At the same time, we need to overcome additional path loss of high frequency. To summarize the above discussion, we see the, a need to design a new radio access network or radio air interface, considering the following aspects. First, the 6G air interface design will be powered by a combination of model and data-driven AI to enable the tailored optimization of air interface from a provisional configuration to self-learning. Here we call it intelligent air. The second, for 6G, AI will be a built-in feature of air interface, uh, enabling intelligent physical layer and a MAC layer. Unlike the 5G power saving mechanism, where power saving is an add-on feature or an opt optional mode, power saving in 6G will be a built-in feature and a default operation mode. 6G will have joint communication and sensing. Sensing not only provides new functionalities, but also assists communications. With sensing and AI capabilities, beam management will be proactive UE-centric in 6G instead of passive on-demand beam management. Existing system mainly track channel based on reference signal which is difficult for high mobility user. 6G will sense and predict channel with sensing and AI, even controlling the channel with reconfigurable surfaces. 6G will fully integrate non-terrestrial nodes with, with the terrestrial system. With the maturity of full duplex technology, wideband components technology, 6G can be designed in duplex agnostic manner to flexibly use the spectrum. Previous generation typically designed separate baseband and IF chains, 6G sure consider a joint design. Some of the key driver for a new 6G network architecture are shown here. The first driver from a cloud centric to AI native enabling platform as a service and AI as a service. The second driver from information centric to network as a sensor. The network wide sensing and device assist sensing will make radio access network with additional side information. The real time environment sensing will make 4D digital map, which in turn can support all the AI applications. This is a big value added services to any applications. The third drive from security centric to multilateral trust model. This is because in addition, 
in, in addition, a secure information pipe. We need to build the network platform for many new business and players. The trust and the privacy mechanism will be incorporated in 6G. The fourth driver from a generic bit pipe to user centric. This is because every user, every service are composed of a customized network as if the network is mine. The four, fifth driver is operate to consumer centric. This is because the business model is from operate centric to consumer centric. The operate owned network can be extended and augmented with other players to provide a new infrastructure and to build new services. Most of this talk is based on our book uh, wrote last year, which is now available. This concludes my talk. I will be available online for Q&A. Thank you for listening. Before I leave, I would like to share with you a video clip. Radio communication turned its first page when Marconi transmitted the first radio signal across the Atlantic. With the endless frontiers of wireless spanning 5G, we start wondering what 6G would be like. 6G will serve as a distributed neural network for future intelligence of everything. Network sensing and native AI will become two new usage scenarios to fuse the physical, biological, and cyber worlds, leading to an era of connected intelligence. 6G will provide universal high-performance wireless connections with speed comparable to optical fibers. Terabits per second peak data rate, up to 100 gigabits per second user experience rate, and sub-millisecond level transmission latency will enable truly immersive human-centric experience. Further integrating terrestrial and non-terrestrial networks, we can see, touch, smell, and play with family and friends from thousands of miles away, even in the sky or in outer space. Six G will accelerate full-scale digital transformation of vertical industries in future automated and flexible manufacturing. Precise localization and deterministic communication will be provided to support real-time interaction between collaborative robots. Every thinking of network architecture is also considered necessary to enable massive machine learning and knowledge sharing among robots. 6G will continue the journey of connected everything initiated in 5G, but with larger variety of devices, new human-machine interfaces, higher density of connections, and native trustworthiness. 6G will integrate sensing with communication in a single system. Radio waves can be exploited to see the physical world and make digital twins in the cyber world. Such capability offers autonomous driving vehicles ultra-high resolution and accuracy in all weather conditions. What's more, high precision localization and gesture recognition will truly free our hands and make art creation anywhere, anytime. 6G will boast its native AI capability. Deep Edge architecture enables massive machine learning in a distributed and collaborated manner. Robots can thus harmoniously work and play with humans. Meanwhile, end-to-end -end machine learning will also be leveraged for customized optimization and network automation. 6G is the next horizon of innovations. The ambition of our 6G vision is to make our planet intelligently connected, sustainably developed, better protected, and full of vitality in all walks of life. 6G, the next horizon, from connected people and things to connected intelligence.